Hi there guys and welcome to another Train Sim 2020 video. Today I'm taking a look at a Payware scenario pack by uh, Dom. Uh, he's funky DCZ over on AlanThompsonSim.com. This is one of the um, nuclear train scenarios that's in the pack. Well, it's the only nuclear train scenario that's in the pack. But there's plenty more for the um, West Coast Mainline, Midlands and Northwest. Um, this is oh, Missing Link, aka the Missing Link. This is, includes Phase 1 and Phase 2 of these scenarios. So there's some good ones on there. That I'm looking forward to doing. I picked this one due to its length and it's quite fun doing something with some nuclear flasks. Again, apologies about the rubbish camera, that'll be sorted as soon as we can. It's also roasted and hot in here, just to give you that heads up. So if you see me profusely getting shinier throughout the video, uh, do bear with me. Right, uh, a very good morning driver. Prepare your train and depart when ready. Please remember 60 mile per hour limit for this work and there's also 40 mile per hour TSR in place just after warranted due to essential, essential track side work. Okay, that's fine. We don't have to tab. Won't be on the hard. Goldwyn Junction. Perfect. Okay, right. Let's get this out. Woo -woo 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 -woo. TPWS and AWS operational. Give me a little bit of loco break. I haven't driven out of here yet. I'm looking forward to it. This is one of my favourite sort of sidings uh, uh, on the missing link. Just like the way it's all sort of caged in, CCTV around it, all that jazz. It's a fair climb out of here as well. Another clear signal. Oh, network ground needs to get down here with the hedge trimmers. We'll stick that in the update patch notes. Red at the end there, but some orange men. Got a fair weight behind me. Oh, yeah, see, I said that, and I didn't have enough brake on. Oh, this is going to make a good start. So that's what, 200... They're, I think they're about 50 tonne each, though, isn't they? So it's like 200 tonne. The 1 in 40 gradient. Right, we've got the road, right, into forward. Build up some amps. Brake off. That should hopefully, hopefully stop us rolling back, hopefully. Hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully. Good new word, that. That's where we actually take us to Wigan, getting relieved at Wigan. What was 
it with a different... The train approaching this platform does not stop here. Please stand back. The platform edge. I do like crew. One of my favourite places to go. Not many people would say that, would they, really? You have to be a bit of a railway buff to really enjoy crew. Some decent pubs. If you're in crew, go to the Cheshire Inn. It's my favourite pub in crew. It's a good laugh. Nice staff. Looks rougher than it really is. It's actually really nice, really friendly pub. And dirt cheap. It was like 2.30 for a pint. Of course, only if you're old enough. Oh crap, I didn't check my signal was clear after this. Is that going to be red? Uh, no, green. Brilliant. And as is the law when we come through crew, we need to go and have a little wave to Brighton. We'll do that as we pass the Heritage Centre. Right away. Oh, hello, Mr. Pendolino. We uh, hatch open. Yay, we can do sixty now. Sixty is our top speed. Crash mode on for a minute, I won't leave on all the time. I would quite happily have it on the whole time, but I know you guys won't necessarily for watching the video. Right, nuclear flask, flask wagons. A nuclear flask is a shipping container that is used to transport active nuclear materials between nuclear power stations and spent fuel reprocessing facilities. Each shipping container, oh, 60, max speed, Alan. Each shipping container is designed to maintain integrity under normal transportation conditions and during hypothetical accidents. They must protect their contents against damage from the outside world, such as impact on fire. They must also contain the contents from leakage, from both physical leakage and radiological shielding. So, nuclear waste is carried in ships, in trains, in trucks, uh, lots and lots of things uh, in the UK and in Europe and all over the place, really. Uh, if you're lucky enough to have ever seen one of the nuclear convoys going up to sort of fast lane and all that lot up in Scotland, you'll have seen those. Uh, and I'm sure plenty of people have seen a uh, uh, nuclear train. Most of them are going up to Sellafield for reprocessing, but we'll read what the blurb says about it. Railway carried flasks used to transport spent fuel from nuclear power stations in the UK and the Sellafield spent nuclear, re nuclear reprocessing facility. Each flask weighs more than 50 tonnes and transports not usually more than two and a half tonnes of spent nuclear fuel. 
So 50 ton, over 50 tons of wagon for two tons, two and a half tons of fuel. That's pretty inefficient, but I suppose you need it for the shielding and the, the, there was the crash test, wasn't there, and everything. Over the past 35 years, British Nuclear Fuels PLC, BNFL, and its subsidiary P PNTL have conducted over 14,000 cask shipments of spent nuclear fuel worldwide, transporting more than 9,000 tonnes of spent nuclear fuel over 16 million miles via road, rail and sea without a radiological release. British Nuclear Hmm. Wasn't the Mon Louis ship, didn't that? No, I don't think that, that leaked actually. I don't think there was any leaks there. Monterey was a ship that got hit by a ferry in the um, in the North Sea in the mid 80s. I think it was 84 or 85, uh, and that was carrying uh, spent nuclear fuel from Belgium to the UK. Well, to sell a fuel, I think. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it was. In the UK, a series of public demonstrations were conducted in which spent f uh, demonstrations were conducted in which spent fuel tanks loaded with steel bars were subject to simulated axing conditions. A randomly selected flask, never used for holding fuel, from the production line was dropped from a tower. The flask was dropped in such a way that the weakest part of it would hit the ground first. The lid of the tank, the lid of the flask was slightly damaged, but very little material escaped from the flask. A little water escaped from the flask, but it was thought that in a real accident, the escape of radioactivity associated with this water would not be a threat to humans or the environment. For a second test, the same flask was filled with, fitted with a new lid and again filled with steel bars and water before a train was driven into it at high speed. The flask survived with only cosmetic damage while the train was destroyed. Although referred to as a test, the actual stresses the flask underwent were, not, were well below the designed, what it was designed to withstand, as much of the energy from the collision was absorbed by the train and also the moving flask some distance. This flask is on display at the training centre at Haysham 1 power station. So I'm sure you've all seen the, the video from the old Dalby test track with a 45, 40, 40, 45, it's a 45 I think, it's a peak being run into it. Uh, and I think it's doing like 100 mile an hour. So introduced in the early 1960s, the Magnox flask consists of four layers, an internal skip containing the waste, guides and protectors around the skip, all contained within 370 millilitre thick steel main body to 370 mil that's 37 centimeters 15 inches it's pretty thick uh, the main body of itself with characteristic cooling fins and since the early 1990s hang on let me start working this out a transport cabin of panels which provide external housing concentrate my speed for a minute so you can see on, uh, on here you can see the cooling fins on the side and the FNAs we'll let that get ahead of us and we should be all right we can go down two track don't we Definitely not happy there. Definitely could be a red. We shall approach with caution as it asks us to. So since the early 90s, a transport cabin of panels which provided an external housing flasks waste were there from the later gas cooled reactor power stations are of a similar but have a thinner steel walls at 90 millimeters thick to allow room for extensive internal lead shielding. The flask is protected by a bolt hasp, which prevents the flask's content from being accessed during transit. You'd, you'd hope they did do that, didn't you? The flasks are all owned by the National Decommissioning Authority, uh, the owners of DRS, which is Direct Rail Services. A train conveying flasks would be hauled by two locomotives, either a 20, 37, 68, 66 or 68, um, Class 68 locomotives are increasingly being used. Locomotives are used in pairs in precaution against one fails en route. Uh, Greenpeace protests that flasks in rail transit pose a hazard to passengers standing on platforms, although many tests performed by health and safety executive have proved that it is safe for passengers to stand on the platform while flasks are passing by. 
There you go. I'm guessing if that 350 is out of the way, we should be all right. Right, let's wait for that to go. So, safety. The crash worthiness of the flask was demonstrated. Oh, God, my words. Can you tell I haven't done videos for a while? The crash worthiness of the flask was demonstrated publicly when a British rail class 46 locomotive was forcibly driven into a derailed flask containing water and steel rods in place of radioactive material at 100 miles per hour. The flask sustaining minimal superficial damage without compromising its integrity. While both the flatbed wagon carrying it and the locomotive were more or less destroyed, additionally flasks were heated to temperatures over 800 degrees to prove safety in a fire. However, critics consider the testing flawed for various reasons. The heat test is claimed to be considerably below that of the theoretical worst case fires and tunnels, which it is, that is lower than it should be. Um, fires and, what was that? Um, the tunnel on the Hope Valley line, fire in there. It was thousands of degrees, if I remember rightly. And the worst case impact today would have closing speeds of around 170 mile an hour. Nevertheless, there have been several accidents involving uh, flasks, including derailments, collisions, and even a flask being dropped to transfer from one train to road with no leakage having occurred. Problems have been found where flasks sweat, when a small amount of radioactive material absorbed into paint migrate to the surface, causing contamination risks. Studies identified that 10, 10 to 15% of flasks in the United Kingdom were suffering from this problem, but none conceded the international recommended safety limits. Similar flasks in mainland Europe were found to marginally exceed the contamination limits during testing and additional monitoring procedures were put in place in order to reduce, reduce the risk. Current UK flask wagons are fitted with a lockable cover to ensure any surface contamination remains within the container and all containers are tested before shipment, with those exceeding the safety levels being cleaned until they are within the limit. In 2001, a report identified potential risks and actions to be taken to ensure safety. So there you go. So that's what the additional external bit looks like. That's why that's like that. It's the new panels on the back. So that's the exterior panels and lockdown just to stop the sweat contamination. I don't think of sweat being that bad until you realise it's radioactive sweat. Ugh. Ooh, Baltimore, Baltimore Tunnel Train Fire. There you go. On the, July the 18th, 2001, a freight train carrying hazardous non-nuclear materials derailed and caught fire whilst passing through the Howard Steel Railroad Tunnel in downtown Baltimore, Maryland, United States. The fire burned for three days with temperatures exceeding 1,000 degrees Celsius. Since the casks are designed for a 30 minute fire at 800, several reports have been made regarding the inability of casks to survive a fire similar to that at Baltimore. However, nuclear waste would never be transported together with hazardous flammable or explosive materials on the same track. That is true.
there's actually like um, like not just Greenpeace against it. There's this uh, website I'm on now is a Cumbrian. Cumbrians opposed to radioactive equipment and radioactive. As well. Cumbrians opposed to a radioactive environment. There you go. This article's from February 1999. It's probably a bit outdated now. So in 2015, the Nuclear Decommissioning Authority awarded Nottinghamshire-based builder WH Davis Limited a contract to supply five new generation flasks for the National Rail Network. And every time I start getting on something new, we have double yellows. These vehicles are intended to replace the existing type FNA flask carriers and the NDA requires them to be certified according to the freight wagon technical specification for interoperability as well as UK notified national technical rules. That was a bit of a mouthful that article, wasn't it? Earlstown, there's a big fire at Earlstown. Big, big fire at Earlstown. Looks like the recycling centre's gone up. Is there a Halesford train? Oh, 60 again, Alan. Stop it. So, right, Dobbs Pack that this comes from. It's a scenario pack for the West Coast Main Line at Midlands and North West, phases one and two featuring mixed traffic workings and prototypical AI. The use of scripted narratives for each scenario adds a sense of realism and immersion. Each scenario has been made with the player in mind to make use of the full West Coast Main Line and the Midlands route offers. Whether you prefer passenger freight, empty coach and stock or special movements, there is something in this pack for everyone. The AP weather pack, I'll give these a two. Um, 
has also been used to provide even more immersion, adding extra factors to the scenarios. Hope you enjoy the pack. I've worked very hard on it and hopefully with the first of many. Uh, the manual is linked and everything there. I'll actually look through that. That would have been a sensible thing to do. So there are... Two Whiskey 3-0, which is the 39 Wolves of Wolverhampton in return. That's in a 350. You've then got 9 Kilo 9-4, which is London Houston to crew, which is using 221s. You've then got 5 Romeo 1-1 and, and 1 Romeo 1-1. Edge Hill Depot to Liverpool Lime Street to London Houston. And that's in the 390, flowing silk. Uh, six Golf 87, which is a scenario I did on the stream the other day, which is brilliant. The start of that scenario is really good, really impressed with that. Uh, which is RB Sign's best got downside yard, that's the 66. And then you've got uh, Moss Internal to Daventry to Modal, um, which is a class 92 or a class 90, depending on which scenario you choose. There's two scenarios to choose from with that. Uh, 6 Charlie 5 3 is crew cold inside. This is what we're doing crew cold sidings to Sellafield and British and nuclear fuels. And that's in 68028 and 68002. So, yeah, I quite like that. Price of it is a 499, 449 if you are a subscriber because you get your discount. I'm speed again. Literally need to get this new shed well moved over to. The, I can't let people call it the new shed. It's just my missus' it's old shed. It's just bigger than mine. Uh, need to get over in that and get everything sorted in there, so I'm not cooking myself to death in this uh, heat. It sounds daft. It's so hot in here. I can taste like the wood where it's wood panelled. I can taste like the smell of the wood, and it's pretty well insulated as well. It's just at this time of the day, it just gets the sun right on top of it. Luckily my computer's got cold feed air, so it doesn't, it pulls it from the outside and down low, so it doesn't overheat. I do. Pumps its heat back at me, but it takes in cold air.
Beaver Junction. I do love this junction, it's really nice coming through in a Pendolino at speed, it's just a pleasure. An absolute pleasure, and an 86, because there's another scenario pack I've got to look at as well, I've got another couple to look at, I've got a, there's a new WTT scenario pack coming for Over Shap, actually, that I'll show you a bit of, that's got some amazingly good scenarios in it. Um, there's also Ash Lightfoot's last pack I've got to take a look at, um, that's next I think. There is TSR in place between Winnick Junction and Goldbourne Junction. You are only permitted to a maximum 40 mile an hour. It will not show on the HUD. Watch for the warning board. I'm watching for the warning board. I will miss it, but I'm watching for it. If you see the board before I do, stick a comment and tell me you saw it before I did. I want to test how test your knowledge. I know I won't be able to prove that you did, of course, but uh, not like those weird YouTubers. My kids watch this one where they go, "What should we do? If you think we should do this, like the video now." Ah, it's, it's not live. Doing that thing where I'm sort of looking for it and then I'm getting impatient. So then I'll end up doing top speed and then see it. I should get a warning anyway. The warning should give me plenty of time to slow down. Ooh, bit of sky and weather pack. Dubri going on there. I'm sure I said it was after Warrington, didn't it? Or did you say the Warrington area? It's 
I don't know where Winnick Junction is. That's the one at the end of um, Warrington, but I don't know which one Goldbourne Junction is. I need to learn it a lot more. I'm going down onto the down slope anyway, so... That's a 15 and we're pretty heavy, so let's get some brakes on. Right, so it's going to be after Wigan, after Warrington. It's like, oh, we've got 60 now. Let's take up to 40 and keep our eye out for this TSR board. It's a lot of drama for one TSR, isn't it? Although I should have root knowledge to know where this is.
Nice bit of a freeze here for Dallum. It's rare for me to get it. Let's hope we don't dump. And we're back. This is the test bit. So those that are having that issue with Dallum, we know what it is now. We've got it to work. I've had to run on a backdated version of the route, but we've worked it out. So it'll be patched. Patch should be out. Uh, this video should go out this week. So patch should be out by the end of the week after this video is released. So after the 25th, I think. Around the 25th. But why am I saying that? That's not right at all. Uh, probably more the 30th. End of the month. to Warrington actually saying that is it 10 miles I don't know why I have my brake on for that long for a 30 limit that's miles away Nice to get a patch to get the, the AP wagon sounds working with them. I think I may have had a fiddle with that before to try and get it to work. Oh, we're diverging here, that's why. I might have to sue myself for working conditions in here, it's too hot. In fact, as you're saying, I don't think there is a maximum temperature, is there, that you, you can work in. There's minimums. I don't know if there is a maximum. Without, like, specific break times and all that sort of thing, I think you've got to do. Right, there's me warning board. And it was 40 anyway.
Can't just assume that everybody's heard you. My inboard there. Cool, that's not too long then. Do we have a train length button on this? I don't know if we do. Something tells me we do. Might be one of the ones that's just on a key command. Touch Bendlino. They do look cool, don't they? Even, even if they're not just top and tailed, sometimes they have the escort. I don't know if FNAs tend to have escort coaches, do they? That's more the um, submarine ones that I can't remember the code for. sounds on these things are amazing. I do love the noise of 67 by uh, 68 makes.
was actually an unbranded Northern one, or was my Brandon pack not on my 158s? Need to check that. Remind me. Not like this is a stream. You can leave me a comment and say, remember to check your pack. <laughs> That's a stupid thing to say. Right, we're actually stopping at Wigan change drivers, that's fine. Can't wait to get all the stuff in for Springs Branch and all that TMD, the little bit there. It's going to look wicked. Decent scenario, like this, like this a lot. Loving all the new stuff that's coming out. People doing stranger workings of that, and everyday scenario is always good. I like those, but then uh, sometimes doing something with a bit to it, I really like. You taking over driving? Do you mind if I just tag along with you, darling? <coughs> All right, and guys, thank you very much for joining me on that uh, wonderful run there. As I said, this scenario is available over on alanthompsonsim.com in uh, Dom's scenario payway pack. Uh, I thoroughly recommend it. Uh, once again, guys. Head on over, well, once again, I don't see said once again then. Head on over to antomsonsim.com for all your latest training of needs. Head on over to Twitch on a Sunday and Wednesday from 7pm for a more adult themed pub style chat about trains. Head on over to the Facebook group for some general chit chat. And if you have any website issues or payware product issues or subware issues, please use the contact us form on the website. Once again, guys, thanks ever so much. I'll catch you next time. <laughs>